And joining us now as we get caught up on some of the key issues in the potato industry, we have Cam Quarles with us, CEO of the National Potato Council. Cam, great to talk with you today, sir. How are you? Jesse, I'm doing I'm doing great. Really happy to be on with you. Thanks for joining me, Cam. And we have a lot to talk about. As I mentioned, I want to start top of mind. We've been hearing a lot about potato wart, uh, especially on Prince Edward Island in Canada. And I know we've now found a fourth case of uh, potato wart on PEI. I uh, just want to get the latest on this situation. I know that it's something that you're watching closely at the National Potato Council, and it's a, a very scary situation for the potato industry. Yeah, it is. And, I, you know, the first thing, uh, th this, is, this, this has been an issue that's been in the news media uh, over the last several years, and it, it, it's continuing to grow. You know, the first thing we have to do is provide our, you know, sympathy and concern for the growers on Prince Edward Island who are dealing with this disease. Um, I think every agricultural, wh whatever you're growing in the United States or around the world, every single commodity is going to have to deal with pest and disease issues at some point. And when they get out of control, they are really devastating. Um, it's uh, this is an issue that there's a lot of cross-border trade that has happened uh, between Prince Edward Island and the United States. Um, really, that border, the, there's there's a lot of collaboration that has to occur in our industry. Having this disease outbreak has not been helpful. Um, we're, a, as it's progressed over the last couple of years, Jesse, um, it's, it's clear that the disease is on the offense. Uh, it's growing. The detections are increasing in frequency. Uh, if this the, this disease is not in the United States right now, if it were to get into the United States, it would be absolutely devastating to the tune of hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in damage to U.S. growers. Export markets would shut overnight. Uh, likely trade between states would be restricted or impaired. Uh, the supply chain impact of what is one of the worst diseases you can have in, in potatoes getting into the U.S., it's, uh, it, it is a doomsday scenario we do not want to think about. Well, Cam, I know uh, some recent reports out from USDA looking at the status of potato warts, and you mentioned how the disease is on the offensive. What can we do for defense here to try and mitigate it and keep it out of the U.S., Cam? Well, the the almost exactly a year ago, Jesse, the the when uh, some uh, additional fines occurred, uh, caused a lot of concerns with USDA. They took the very aggressive step of just simply shutting down all exports from PEI for a period of time. The, uh, that that action uh, was one of the strongest steps you you can take to try to prevent the disease spread. Again, there's economic, uh, impact to that, particularly in the U S we, mm -hmm. we needed a lot of seed potatoes as well as commercial potatoes for that cross border trade that I mentioned. Nonetheless, it was, it, it was the right thing to do given the, the cost benefit of that, the, co the cost of the disease getting into the U S is a heck of a lot worse than the benefits of of having that supply out there. It became a huge political issue in Canada, uh, all the way to Prime Minister Trudeau raising this directly with President Biden in the Oval Office. And a political decision was made to reopen the market back in, uh, in April of this year. That, um, that decision, uh, since that decision was made, USDA, APHIS, you mentioned it earlier, has been looking at all of the technical aspects, all of the circumstances around this disease. They put out a report about two weeks ago um, that uh, is, is a very comprehensive report. And it's also chilling in terms of what the, the potential threat is for this disease to get in the U.S. if they don't take additional steps, additional mitigation steps to get uh, to, to protect the U.S. industry from this mm -hmm from this disease. There is a current work plan in place, and it's very clear from the APHIS report that work plan is not doing the job. It has to be updated. Well, we'll definitely be keeping our eyes on this disease and it's uh, how it evolves uh, on Prince Edward Island, and we hopefully try to keep it out of the United States. Cam, I want to turn my attention to other policy issues you're looking at uh, in D.C. when it comes to 
the potato industry. We know uh, we have farm bill negotiations ongoing. We have elections coming up here next week, which I know is going to be very key. Uh, what are some of the things you're looking at right now uh, on the Hill there in D.C.? Yeah, it's the the, uh, the first question uh, is, is really the, the your last observation, Jesse. We got an election coming up. So um, but before you know how you can play the game, you got to know what team you're going to have on the field and who's going to be coaching it. And so that that's going to determine uh, ne- next week's going to determine who's in the majority in the House uh, and the and potentially in the Senate. Uh, if we have majority flips, that will necessarily uh, change the character of what the 2023 Farm Bill negotiation is going to look like. We've been doing a lot of work um, over the past year, the entire specialty crop industry. Um, uh, potatoes are one of the key commodities in the fruit and vegetable industry in the U.S. Uh, we've put together a comprehensive list of recommendations about how to improve uh, a farm bill. Uh, and we really want to sit down with um, with the key leaders who are going to be writing that bill uh, and 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 make those suggestions a reality. But the first step there is to is to figure out who's going to be in charge, and that's going to impact things. You know, not not just farm bill. That's going to be tax policy, environmental policy, trade policy, all of those things. Uh, if if you have the gavel in Congress, you can get a lot of stuff done. Cam, I know as well, I just thought of this. I know earlier in the spring, we had uh, the Mexico market open up to fresh potatoes once again from the U.S. And now here recently in the news, we've been hearing about some maybe potential trade issues with Mexico, talking about uh, with the uh, USTR. And I I know that's been an interesting situation. What are your thoughts on that situation right now? Yeah, we've been approaching that, Jesse. You guys have uh, have covered this very comprehensively over the past couple of years. Uh, we've been approaching that market. It it has been open for fresh potatoes. This is this was again one of the longest trade disputes in USDA history. Um, it has been open for fresh potato trade since uh, since the spring timeframe. And we've been approaching it with cautious optimism. Uh, our, our export volumes are relatively low in the spring and the summer, but they're really mm-hmm. going to start to ramp here as we're, com- we're completing harvest and we're getting into the beginning of the year. When those volumes hopefully uh, uh, increase, that's going to put some stress on the market. We'll have to see how our, our competitors in Mexico react to that. We're hopeful that with uh, a good supply of high quality U.S. potatoes, it's actually going to raise the prospects, not just for our growers, but also for those Mexican growers. And everybody's going to benefit from a much bigger market in, the, in Mexico. So um, there, there have been some trade issues in other, other places, uh, biotech, corn, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're hopeful that We've been a long-running dispute. We we hope we are not one in the future, and we can just grow that Mexican market. Cam, I know as well the uh, Potato uh, Council uh, convention coming up here at the beginning of the year. Before we uh, run out of time, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, we're we're really excited about that. The Potato Expo, we're we're uh, back live and in person. We actually had a had a live Potato Expo earlier this year. This one, I think, is going to be our biggest one ever. We've got some. Uh, three celebrity chefs from the Food Network are going to join us in Denver, Colorado at the Gaylord Rockies. So right outside Denver International Airport, it will be January 4th and 5th. You're going to see the entire North American potato industry under one roof. Uh, all of our suppliers, buyers, uh, producers, technology providers. Uh, it's really amazing when you see the breadth of this, what is a uh, over four billion dollar industry in the United States, so should should be a lot of fun. We're really looking forward to being fully back uh, in in person in Denver this this coming January. Cam, I'm sure if folks want to learn more about the uh, Potato Expo or get other information, I would think going online nationalpotatocouncil.org is probably a good place to start, isn't that it? Is the, that is a great place to start. You will see all our links right there, and we're happy to have folks. Uh, Check us out, come by, and we're, our door is always open. Well, Cam, our door is always open here as well. We appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll look forward to uh, getting you back on real soon. Take care. Great to see you, Jesse. Thanks for having me.